What's going on, you guys? It's Robin Martyr. Um, this week, what I want to share is on a more personal note. Just want to let you guys know that out front. Um, so yeah, let's let's get into it. So I want to share an image with you guys, okay? And I sought the Lord uh, quite a bit before I decided to do this, but um, here it is. Guess who that is? Yep, that was me. Stitched up eyes, blood coming out of my mouth with a bullet in it. There's even a girl in the background who hung herself. Look how dark, perverted, and twisted that image is, right? But that's that's where I was. And, you know, I knew God at that time. Um, I just was caught up. I was caught up in the music business, you know, partying every day, heavy alcoholism, um, drug use, like a different sexual partner, like every week nearly. I mean, it was really bad. I'm, I know that that's, that's crazy, but I mean, that was the reality and that image was really how I felt inside you know I was that perverted and, and twisted and dark inside and um, like I said I knew the Lord at that time but honestly I really thought that keeping the commandments of God was an impossible thing and I know that there's a lot of people that feel that way today and that's one of the reasons I wanted to record this video is because you know, I knew what the word of God said. I knew it was right, but I didn't understand how somebody like me with the desire of sin that was within me could ever live a life completely without sin. I was just like, that's what the Bible says. But in actuality, it's not, it's not possible. And I actually end up finding out that that was true. And that's one of the things that helped me get set free. Um, I just didn't understand at the time why I was right, but I just knew something about it, you know, had to be true. Uh, Romans 8, 7 says this, the carnal mind or the natural born mind is at enmity with God. It is not subject to the law of God, neither can it be. So imagine when I found that out, I'm like, see, I knew it. The Bible tells us to live that way, but in reality, we can't. So what's the solution to that? You know, how do you even resolve something like that? And here's the thing, right? The answer is actually in the word of God as well. Deuteronomy 29, 29 says this, the secret things belong to the Lord our God, but the things that are revealed belong to us and our children that we may do all the words of the law. So what that's saying is in order for us to live our lives according to the way that the Bible instructs us, in order for us to live a life, you know, without sinning, the the spirit, the secret things within the law of God, or another word for that is just saying the spiritual understanding of the law has to be revealed to us. That's what Paul's talking about when he says uh, the law is spiritual. So here's an example of a spiritual law, right? The We know that uh, one of the commandments is do not commit adultery. And adultery in the natural would be a married woman going to be with a man who isn't her husband. That would be natural adultery. So what is that in the spirit? Well, the spiritual understanding of that would be this. We, as Christians, we're the bride of Christ, right? So we're married to God. God is our husband and God is his word. So anytime we do something outside of his word, or in other words, anytime we commit sin, we've committed adultery against our husband, who is God. You see? So that would be the spiritual understanding of that law. Now, the entire Bible is like this. You know, it's natural things being said, natural stories being told that have a spiritual meaning. Or in other words, parables. The Bible is filled with parables. Those scriptures say that Jesus did not speak without a parable. In Psalms in the Old Testament, it says that God opens his mouth in parables and riddles. So the entire Bible, you know, is, is, is written in this style or in this language. Um, now, what's the reason that, you know, when we get this spiritual understanding of the Bible, all of a sudden we're able to live our lives according to the way that God instructs. Well, the word says that the word of God is living and active, right? And it means that literally, not figuratively. The word of God is actually alive, but not the natural understanding of it, right? The natural understanding or the letter, it doesn't have, it, it, it's not what's living. That's why the scripture said that the letter kills, right? 
It's the spiritual understanding that is alive. That's why in the same verse it says, but the spirit gives life. Look, within our very nature, there is sin. There is sin within our very nature. So somebody preaching the natural understanding of the word of God can't change or transform that nature. Okay, the Bible says don't kill. The Bible says don't steal. The Bible says don't fornicate. Yes, that's nice. I know the Bible says that, but I still really, really want to do it. And 9.5 times out of 10, if the opportunity presents itself, I'm going to do it. Right. However, when the spiritual understanding of the word of God is revealed to you or unveiled, it has the power to transform that very nature within you. Right. Second Corinthians 318 says, behold, uh, it says, uh, but we all with unveiled face beholding as in a mirror the glory of God, we are transformed into his very image from glory to glory, right? So within that spiritual understanding is the actual power to remove that desire to sin out of your very being, right? And that's exactly what happened to me. So I'm not speaking about fairy tales. I'm speaking about things that I've experienced. I know what worked for me, okay? Luke eight eleven says, the seed is the word of God. Why does it compare to a seed? Well, what is a seed? A seed has two parts, essentially, right? There's the shell and there's the actual kernel. Now, where's the life at? Where's the power within that seed? Is it in the shell? No, it's in it's in the kernel, right? That's where the life comes from. That's where the plants grow from. So the natural understanding of the word of God would be that shell. But the kernel would be the spiritual understanding of the word of God. That's what has the power in it, right? So I had all these seeds laying dormant in me because the spiritual understanding of the word of God was never opened up to me. So there was no power ever, ever activated. But when it began to be open to me, the power of the word of God was activated and my life began to transform. So look, I could just really go on and on. This is a really um, intricate and deep subject. But believe me, the Bible is this deep and your God is this deep. Right. So, um, you know, the very fact that this happened to me is 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 what does save me from eternal hair, hell fire for eternity. Because regardless of what we believe, regardless of what you've been taught, if we remain in sin, we will not inherit the kingdom of God, period. All right. So, you know, you can read that in the word for yourself. Look, if any of you guys have questions, if any of you want to know more about the things that I shared, you know, you want to have a one on one conversation with me about it. Look, send me a personal message. I love to talk to you guys and just expound on some of the things um, that I shared here and just my own personal experience. Amen. So look, I love you guys. Um, I hope this blesses you in some way. And uh, thank you for watching.